I'm Helen Armitage. And I'm Chris Webb. And you're listening to The Next Normal, the podcast that explores the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has had and continues to have on different individuals, organisations and sectors, spying the world of business, education and careers. On The New Normal, we heard from a range of individuals about how they were adapting to a challenging climate. And we're now taking this one step further as we look to the future and quiz another slate of fantastic guests about how they're planning for the unknown, what different sectors are doing to adapt, and whether any green shoots of optimism are starting to appear in the wake of the pandemic and subsequent lockdown. Thank you for joining us as we explore what the next normal might look like for all of us on a local, national and global scale. A very good morning and welcome to the season finale of The Next Normal. Um, I'm joined for the final time this year by my co-host Helen Armitage. Uh, Helen, how are we doing today? I'm very well today, thank you, Chris. Very well. I would say eight out of ten. I'm going to go with that. Um, yeah, very good. How are you? Yeah, no, not too bad. I think um, the stage we've got to the year, it's got to be at least an eight, hasn't it? You know, a Christmas yeah. approaching possibly some kind of hope green shoots of optimism for 2021 so yeah can't complain we'll give give us an eight and a nine uh, maybe for the final um, episode of the series yeah. um, and we're really really pleased today we've got a bumper panel of guests so fresh from the fantastic hepfest 2020 we're going to hear a little bit more about uh, we've got a huge panel of guests from the widening participation organization hep and hepsi uh, which is an office for students funded uni connect program we'll hear a little bit more about that in the podcast and we're going to be reflecting on the challenges of supporting school young people and parents carers in the online and physical worlds during what is fair to say has probably been the most disrupted of academic years uh, and we're also going to be discussing some of their recent research and the activity that our guests have been involved with so huge amount to cover real bumper episode to finish the series with so I'm very pleased to say and this is where I have to hold my breath in uh, as we introduce all of our guests uh, that first of all we're joined by Caroline Hansen uh, who's a higher education progression advisor at Hepsi so Caroline thank you for joining us how are you doing today? Hi, good morning, Chris. It's great to see you today. And I'm doing well, thank you. Hope you are. Brilliant, thank you. And we're also joined by uh, Caroline's colleague, Rachel Crowder, uh, another higher education progression advisor with Hepsi. So Rachel, uh, very good to see you too. Good morning, yep. Hi, everybody. Fantastic. Um, as well as that, oh God, there we go, running out of breath. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Mike Garnick-Jones. Mike is the director at HEP, the Higher Education Progression Partnership. So Mike, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how are you today? So, Chris, thanks so much. Good morning. Uh, thanks for the invite. I'm very well. We're nearly there in terms of arriving with a sort of festive, the festive break, really. So nearly there and very happy. Thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. And finally, last but certainly not least, uh, we're joined by Sabrina McKetty edwards uh, Sheffield Hallam Film Production graduate and a higher education engagement assistant with HEPSI at Link to Longley Park College. So, Sabrina, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, how are you today? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Ready for this holiday that's coming up. Yeah, I, th I think we're, we're all there as well. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. And we've got so much to get through in this podcast. We're going to move on pretty quickly. But first, of course, for the final time in this series, our gloom balances our good news stories for the week. So Helen and I are going to forego our good news stories and we're going to pass straight over to our guest today. Um, so we'll start with Mike. Um, Mike, any good news stories you'd like to share with us at all this week? Yeah, I'm going to do a work one and a personal one, really. So the work one is, and just to flag up to listeners, um, the Office for Students have opened, published their consultation for the UniConnect programme phase three. At the moment, HEPSI is funded to July next year. So please go on the OFS website and look for UniConnect programme consultation. And that's your opportunity to uh, contribute and give feedback to the Office for Students. I'm really, really pleased to see that was published earlier this week. And I moved house a couple of weeks ago and the kitchen is nearly finished and we can start cooking in there. So get in there. Fantastic. And we will make sure to share all of those kind of links in the episode notes um, once the podcast goes out. Um, so thanks very much for that, that Mike. Um, we'll move on to Caroline. So Caroline, um, any good news stories for us this week? Yes, in the run up to Christmas, uh, one highlight for me has been seeing my daughter perform in the Nativity Christmas show. So she's four years old now, singing her heart out. So when Santa got stuck up the chimney, just having a whale of a time, not caring that she's totally out of sync with everyone else. It just brings a lot of joy to see that, even though we're not able to go into the nursery um, the way we, we would have done other years, but just a great, great positive for me. That, that sounds fantastic. Brilliant. And uh, uh, Rachel, um, any good news stories from you? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so it's not actually a personal one uh, from me. It's actually one that I've seen on the news um, and it made me have a huge smile on my face. It was a lady who is uh, celebrating her 100th birthday in a care home and obviously due to restrictions, family, friends aren't able to spend it with her. Um, her care and support workers put a message on social media to say, you know, can somebody send anything through to her just so that we can celebrate within the care home. Um, from that, she actually got 600 or over 600 cards. She got chocolates, she got cake, she got flowers, she got presents. Um, so she's had an absolute whale of a time. So um, she celebrated in serious style this week. That's fantastic. Uh, people can be great, can't they? We get we get down on people. People can be great. Um, okay, Sabrina, to, to finish the good vibes, um, any good news stories you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so um, I'm a part of the college in sixth form network um, at Hepsi, and we have just found out that quite a few students have actually applied to go on to university. So as we're getting closer to the UCAS deadline, more and more students are still applying. So that's really good to know that um, with the positive, with the negative press, that it hasn't really deterred students that they're still kind of pushing forwards. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Some really great good news stories there. Um, Helen, I feel like Scrooge at the end of A Christmas Carol. I'm alive with the uh, the Christmas spirit and positivity. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's move on to the, uh, the main kind of topic of the podcast. Over to you and uh, we'll get started. Yeah, brilliant. Now, that's fantastic. They're great news stories. And it's a it's a real it's a, it's a nice way to, uh, to to add to the to the podcast there. So thank you for all for sharing that. OK, so our first kind of topic to discuss then is um, I'll come to you with this one this one might to pick up the first question so preparing to enter the world of higher education can be really challenging for young people in any year um, but with the move to remote learning in 2020 this is likely a further element of difficulty a huge amount of difficulty really for a lot of young people so what has it been like supporting young people this year and are there any key lessons that you've learned as an organization yeah really interesting question thank you Ellen and uh yeah, I mean, what what a, what a nine months really, and I, I reflect back on that sort of time, late February, early March, when uh, the proverbial hit the fan, and I think we all in education face that sort of tremor, and really had to sort of reassess how do we support young people, parents, and teaching staff during this time, and I think probably for about a month or two, it was the shock waves were just everywhere, and people were getting up to speed with everything. You know, you've got the sort of, I suppose, the sort of, whilst this is the poison chalice, actually everything is sort of yin and yang and there's benefits and disadvantages. And clearly the digital support that's been rapidly accelerated during that time is something that will continue into the future. You know, podcasts, Rachel here has, has been tweeting merrily, Sabrina, in terms of her expertise, in terms of filmmaking and such like. So it's been a rapid learning curve, I think, for everybody. Uh, we've obviously had to move to working at home and connect with colleagues, never mind with schools and college. So a really interesting sort of period. It gave us time during that time to create a digital offer. And we've always got to be flexible with schools and colleges is about how we can support them best when they've got so many other agendas and challenges. And I think we've got, got to a good place where we've got a sort of digital offer, which is really off the shelf. Here you go. Here's some stuff. Use it in lessons. Send it home as homework really nice sort of short succinct content and then also then there's a blended offer where we can actually still virtually arrive in a school and deliver perhaps a more extended piece of work and that I think is now gaining traction as we move towards the end of the year and the evidence of, of that so it's been an interesting journey throughout really I've always said to my colleagues really we must continue to I, I think I challenge our own practice and challenge the assumptions that are out there really because I think now schools, every school has had to deal with this very differently. Even, even the design of a building of a school has had impact on how they deliver education. You know, we've got a school in Barnsley that can very effectively deliver in their five separate buildings. The bubbles, it's all separate. It's great. Others really challenged about how do they work in sets and, 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 and deliver the curriculum. So we can't make any assumption now about working with schools and colleges. It's important that we are well informed. So I think I suppose that's my second sort of principle and, and, and really sort of positive learning point is that we just really need to challenge and make sure that we've we've got a clear understanding of where the opportunities are and, and challenge 
these assumptions that we often make ourselves. The digital has allowed us to do things like HEPFest that some colleagues are going to talk about in a bit. And that was just unbelievable in terms of the scale. And I again reflect on if we had a physical event, we'd never hit the numbers of students participating, the numbers of teachers uh, participating, the numbers of stakeholders who contributed sessions. So really exciting times. But I listened to two sessions there. I just wanted just to cover a couple of bits, if that's okay, just to perhaps challenge our own assumptions about applications for university. One was a presentation by UCAS, and they were reminding us that actually last year, uh, still more, more young people applied and progressed to higher education than any other year recently. And that's with the demographic dip as well, actually, where there are less 18 year olds. There was actually a 4% increase of applications and progression uh, in the last cycle. So I think there's some interesting challenges in that the world carries on really and young people still want to do the best and progress and our role is to support them with that. They did a survey uh, with young people who were currently applying and again some really interesting findings and there is anxiety, clearly concerns about confidence, about lost learning, about the sort of digital divide, but equally um, you know, young people still have that, many of them have that expectation, that aspiration to progress. And therefore, I think it's 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 allowed us to carry on uh, supporting and, and helping young people uh, progress. We work, obviously, with Y9s and above. And so hopefully, within the next year or so, we return to some sort of level of normality. So Y9s are still five years away from progressing. So it's really important we invest with all, all year groups. The other one was NEON, a presentation by NEON. Uh, by uh, the sort of chief executive there, and he did done some work in London looking about the impact on lost learning and if uh, young people perhaps dropped by a grade or two, what would be the impact? And there was a, that's potentially a significant impact this year on progression. Five thousand young people in London may lose the opportunity to progress to higher education by losing those one or two grade boundaries. And within that population, they did some work and it was, again, as is evidenced by the pandemic itself, was the imp impact on the BAME community uh, particularly. And they then have sort of tentatively extrapolated that across to what would be the picture across the country. So I think universities still, alongside UniConnect programmes, have still got a significant piece of work during this next year, both to ensure that young people are well informed, accurately informed. Uh, and again, that was the point of, of PEPFest. So I'll stop there, otherwise I can wrap it on for hours. That's great. Thanks, Mike. A really good overview, uh, I suppose, of kind of some of the challenges that you've mentioned. I guess we will be kind of picking those up a little bit later in the podcast as well. Okay. So we, we've kind of got the sort of umbrella there, the big picture of sort of maybe what's happening. It might be really useful for our listeners to sort of zero in on the work of HEPSI and uh, of kind of the UniConnect programme and what's been going on there, but also, I guess, how that's changed this year. So, Rachel, if we can kind of come to you first, can you sort of tell our listeners a little bit more about the work that you do at HEPSI and, and perhaps kind of how things have changed uh, over the course of this year? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, HEPSI, as Mike um, has already mentioned, is an Office for Students funded UniConnect programme. And basically we work with uh, year nine right the way through to year 13 students uh, across the Sheffield City region. And we work with them to um, increase their knowledge of HE, so higher education. We also ensure that they are well informed about all of their options, whether that's post-16, post-18. Um, and what we are trying to do, our aim is basically to try and reduce the gap uh, between the most and least represented um, students. So for us, our normal non-pandemic sort of year um, would be going out physically into schools. Um, we've got a group of higher education progression advisors. So that's um, what Caroline and, and I are part of. And then we've got a team of higher education engagement assistant, what uh, Sabrina is part of. Um, and we deliver sessions, um, all different careers and employability sessions from sort of the higher education progression advisors. And then for the sort of Sabrina's team, they do a lot around attainment, confidence and resilience. So a lot of sessions that would um, either integrate, be integrated into the curriculum, whether that's for a year nine group or year 13s. 
Um, or it might be, you know, we, we do one to one career guidance sessions as well. So that's sort of a, a whistle stop tour of, of Hepsi. But what we've had to do due to this pandemic is we've had to very, very rapidly move to everything uh, remotely, remove, move everything digitally. And to be honest, listen to the schools and the colleges to actually see how we can help them and support them in, in such a um, unprecedented times, really. And it has, as Mike said, you know, it has forced us in a way to really improve our digital um, skills and really sort of improve the the sort of scope that we are providing to, to schools and on different platforms in different formats. Um, so, for example, as Mike said, we've now got the digital sessions that we've never had before um, that schools can log on to our website, um, which is www.hepsi.org.uk. So just a bit of a plug there. So they can log on to our website and cherry pick from a, a, an offer basically of um, digital sessions, five to 10 minute, minute videos that they can just slot into any lesson at all. So we've never had that opportunity to do that before. It's always been a case of we are actually physically going out to the other side of Doncaster, for example, the other side of Sheffield, Rotherham, Barnsley. So I do think that our offer has become a lot more flexible um, and adaptable because of the pandemic. Yes, it's had sort of, you know, issues and that there's been a, a few stumbling blocks along the way, but we've worked absolutely brilliantly as a team. Um, and also with the, the schools and colleges as well, they've been absolutely fantastic in quite clearly saying exactly what they want, how we can help, uh, and we go ahead, we, we go away and, and try and do that for them. And it all it's, it's all about ensuring that we are providing the best service to those students, those staff members who are now being asked all about the post-16 options that students have got that have never been asked those questions before, uh, making sure that they're obviously upskilled as well, because that's something else that, that we do for our schools and colleges. No, I, I mean, absolutely sounds like it, it's there's been a huge amount going on. Of course, the, the world doesn't stand still. So as you said, all of those options that would exist anyway around kind of T-levels, maybe new routes that haven't been there before, still has to happen that advice still needs to be there and um, Sabrina I'm going to come over to you if that's okay and um, you've obviously been doing a lot of this work um, on the ground as have Caroline and Rachel how, how have you kind of found things this year and, and what's it been like working with Longley um, College? So this year has been really interesting because at the start of the year I was working with the Sheffield College and um, so much activity had been planned on programme there was um, trips to different universities taste the days different universities coming in and just before we went into lockdown we actually ran something called Upfest and um, the college usually run that during National Careers Week and it's all about careers and progression and kind of going further so I had a lot of fun working on that and then we went into lockdown and everything kind of got flipped on its head and as we started, um, the EA started to kind of cut down on the amount of contact they had with students. We started to kind of look at the program in more detail and work out how's the program actually going to function um, when the academic year starts back up in September. One thing I have to say I've enjoyed is the fact that I've been able to work on so many different projects. And when I was based in a college, I was kind of working for the college but for Hepsi at the same time so a lot of my work was with the college students so being at home I've been able to dip in and out of so many different projects and offer um, the wider team lots of support and I've put a lot of work into shaping how the project goes um, how it's looking this year and then I've been working on Hepfest um, and that's been really fun and I've previously been um, in a task and finish group with Mike and Rachel and that was looking at the digital practice and how we're actually going to take our project digitally so um, that side of it I've really enjoyed because I know that I wouldn't have had um, the opportunity to kind of be involved um, with the program on that level and kind of understanding what the project is about um, when you're in 
a school or a college and you're out and about and you're working with that institution you don't really see how the project is operating because you're kind of on the ground but now we're at home it's kind of like we've got that bird's eye view of the project and we can be like oh so this is how this will affect my job this is what I need to offer to someone someone else in order for their job to work and it will help with my job so it has been um, a really interesting experience and now that I've started up with Longley so I started a few weeks ago I've been able to kind of put everything into practice and because I've been working on literally every project that Hepsi has been running it's like when I get questions about oh would this work I can say yeah it would work because I helped create it or this would be matched well better um, with this group these groups of students and before I worked in the college I was part of their core central team so I've traveled around South Yorkshire to all the different schools and colleges and they've actually been with um, Longley before but only for a day or two. So um, yeah, I've been able to kind of take everything I've learned from uh, my past two years on project and really kind of shape it into something that will go further. That's great, Sprint. I think it's a really important point as well about that kind of stepping back or what you've been able to do and step back. And as Mike mentioned, so much going on, it's really made everybody look at their own practice, but it's a really interesting point about being online and actually it does give you that space and separation. So yeah, not something I'd kind of considered. Um, you mentioned in there obviously about HEPFest. So of course we have to talk about HEPFest last week, amazing lineup. Caroline, how did it go? And can you tell us a bit more about, you know, what it was like, I guess, transitioning that event to a, a virtual space? Yes, certainly. So um, for the past few months, we've been working together to plan a one week digital higher education festival that would be accessible to all our schools and colleges, parents, young people, staff members, um, but that could be accessed um, at all different times throughout the week. And I guess when the planning started for it, we didn't quite know what it was going to look like. We didn't quite know if it was going to be a success. But I think positive that members of the team just really pushed ahead with making that happen. I think particularly our colleagues, Suzanne Wilkes and Mel Green, that really for, were at that forefront of the organisation. So just hello to them if they're, they're listening today. So for um, HEPFest, we had 107 different events all throughout the week aimed at different year groups, right from year seven, right up to year 13 and also the different groups that I mentioned like we had quite a lot of CPD staff training events we had a number of events for parents a number of events aimed at college age students that they could tap into individually and for the school age groups we it was particularly exciting because we might have had say 10 signups for a session and when it came to delivering that session each of those signups might have a class of 30 students behind them so the reach of that was really exciting for us. And some schools we worked with really got on board with so many of those sessions coming along just for half an hour, just for short, short periods. But to hear different speakers, to hear insights in how they could, how the subjects they were studying was linked to the curriculum. So we had a few high profile guest speakers. We had Basit Siddiqui, um, that's one of the individuals involved in Gogglebox, who runs an educational organization we had Jordan Lee a local radio presenter we had a live cook along we had events from our partner universities Sheffield Uni and Sheffield Hallam and a whole, just a whole range of things some fantastic events from our engagement assistants the individuals that do Sabrina's role I think a highlight for me uh, was a session my colleague Bryony led on mindfulness and how that can be useful for academic profession progression and we've had some really positive feedback about that session from individuals that had attended. Just exciting to try different things, to get involved in different activities. Session I was leading called Picturing Your Career. We had a, a member of our team who is an artist who was actually live drawing that session as I was speaking and creating that piece of artwork and including ideas from the young people in the different classes and different groups alongside that. So we're really hoping that HEPFest came together just to be an exciting event, just to be something positive to all those individuals that came along. All of the sessions have been recorded, so the impact of it isn't over. All those recordings are going to be uploaded to the website sometime in January. So keep an eye on that, the website that's on hep.ac.uk forward slash festival. And any listeners are really welcome to use those recordings, welcome to play them to your students, welcome to listen to them personally and yeah we're just really pleased from 
some of the feedback. We had 1,060 people at the last count that were involved in that event and um, from 38 different schools and colleges, a lot across our region that we regularly work with, but some from much further afield as well. And we've had individuals from all throughout the country contacting us and asking about how it went and what we learned from it. So lots of positives and some ideas that will come from that to build on in the future. Okay, so this is our top of the pod section of the podcast where we come to our guests to ask them about their favourite podcast that they're listening to at the moment. So Caroline, I'll come to you first. What are you listening to? So I do love podcasts at the moment, just to kind of unwind and just enjoy listening to something different. I've got two that I'm loving at the moment. So I've always really liked uh, Rod Gilbert as a comedian. So their new podcast, The Froth, with his partner, Sean Harris. Just really good for lighthearted, uh, making you laugh out loud, just thinking about the world in a positive way. So that's one. Um, and then secondly, I've been enjoying the Squiggly Careers podcast, which I think Chris uh, is a fan of as well. I know you've mentioned previously. Um, just good for think- helping you think about your own career development in a time when there's so much else going on, helping think about the skills we're all developing. Um, and that's with Sarah Ellis and Helen Tupper. So that's one I definitely recommend to all listeners. Yeah, brilliant. Massive fans of the Squiggly Careers here, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Mike, how about yourself? Uh, no specific recommendations, but I just uh, I just really have enjoyed anything to do with sport. I, it's one thing that I've missed most. It's just sort of live sport, just watching and listening to the sound of a football crowd. You can watch the game now and I'd be able to, but just that sound. So, yeah, I mean, there's sort of Peter Crouch podcast, others, but I, I, I listened to another one the other night, which was an open water uh, one. I think that was through the BBC, uh, half an hour, people swimming ice miles, so swimming under five degrees no wetsuits and all that lot, hardcore, but just the impact on the body. So, yeah, any sport podcast. Well, just, just saying those words makes me cold. <laughs> Rachel, how about yourself? Uh, mine is a very common one, and Mike's already mentioned it, but absolute favourite of mine is uh, the Peter Crouch podcast. So on my many, many walks that I've been doing, um, during this pandemic if anyone sees me with my headphones in laughing away um, that is what I will be laughing away at it's brilliant definitely big fan here and Sabrina how about yourself so I'm similar to Mike I don't have like a specific podcast but the last one I listened to um, was Mo Gillian um, who is a UK comedian and he started doing a podcast and um, he kind of records it so you can watch it on YouTube as well. So his has been touching on culture and um, entertainment. So that's been really fun to listen to. Brilliant. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I think it's right what you say that, yes, we're in this situation of you know, global pandemic and we've had to revert, uh, revert to the digital ways of working. But it's interesting to think about if we would have or you would have had the same kind of reach in the real world, shall we call it. And Max furiously shaking his head. <laughs> but uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's useful to think about that and and how that can influence future plans going forward. Yeah. OK, so our final uh, discussion topic is thinking about the future, looking ahead, whatever we can see at this current place in time. <laughs> So what do we think uh, the next normal will look like for widening participation or engagement work moving forward? And what are the key things you'll keep or throw away from this year in terms of what you've learned? So, Mike, I'll come to you first. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I I think you never go backwards. You never return to that original place. So I think we have really got an exciting opportunity to build on this experience and, and, and really recognize the benefits. So we will return to delivering face-to-face, fingers crossed, at some point next year. And you all, we all know that that face-to-face interactivity, non-verbals, the ability to, to read a class and just to, to get in there is, is, is really important. But actually, it can be enhanced by the digital. So if we, if we reflect on Pet Fest, I mean, that scale of numbers that Caroline's talked about and the sessions and the, and the, and the uh, attendance rates, And the opportunity to catch and record all those sessions would have been very difficult if we'd held, as we do do, we did do, our annual conference every year, really. We wouldn't have recorded those workshops. And we've got that that content now. 
So really we're combining the two. We're returning to that sort of physical face-to-face, -face, but we've also now got up our sleeve the sort of, I think the confidence and competence to deliver digitally. The HEPAs, the careers team, perhaps realizing again we can we can really embrace the advice line so that young people can contact them directly. The travel can be reduced and we can increase accessibility as well as that support. So really, I think really exciting times going forward and subject to the consultation and subject to the usual funding, then I think all UCPs across the country, Nicolette programmes across the country and, and HEPSI within South, South Yorkshire can continue to be a significant support and key player uh, across the region. Okay, so Rachel, yourself, just one line from, or one line-ish, shall we say, your thoughts for the next normal of engagement? Uh, yeah, so as Mike said, obviously feedback from schools and colleges is that nothing can replace that that face to face physical sort of somebody being there and delivering those sessions. So definitely sort of looking forward to getting back out and, and seeing students in person and, and well, seeing anybody in person, in fact. But um, something that definitely is, is a huge positive um, are those digital resources that we've now got in our back pocket that we can um, give to schools. And, you know, it can even be a, a preparation for us coming in physically. They could see that, you know, a couple of days before and say, expect somebody to come in and talk to you about in a little bit more detail. So definitely, definitely, definitely something that is a huge positive to come out of this, the, the amount of resources and um, digital resources that we've now got, like I say, in our locker to use. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not kind of thrown away what we've learned from this year. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And Sabrina, how about yourself? Your predictions for the future? Yeah. I think the demand for widening participation is just going to skyrocket. I think unless you work in widening participation or you've come from that kind of background, you don't really know the kind of work that goes on and not many people engage with it unless they need to. But I think after this year, everyone's going to realise that widening participation is important and that we need to kind of act on it. And we're lucky that we kind of spent all of summer getting ourselves ready. So we've kind of got the resources ready to kind of, it's like we're, we're a SWAT team. We're ready to kind of roll out and tackle all these students and make sure that they're ready to kind of keep on progressing. Absolutely. Perfect point there. Completely agree with you as well. I think demand is going to skyrocket. Absolutely. And Caroline, how about yourself? I think both before and after lockdown, one aspect that had been really growing from our programme is that continuous professional development of staff within schools and within colleges and just thinking of all the ways that we can best support those staff that we're working with. And we've seen that perhaps one centre has us in for some staff training and then they'll share with another how that's gone and that kind of snowball effect because the staff in the schools and colleges we're working with do such an amazing job and they're just working flat out all the time and they might not have time to be reading up about certain changes or to be perhaps as up to speed with things that might be happening around them we, and we just want to support them the best we can and um, so we're going to keep developing that staff training program we've got both digitally and um, in person in the future and just a shout out and a well done really to all the amazing staff that we link up with in schools and colleges. Yeah th thank you all some really kind of uh, positive but but I guess kind of you know challenging things to end on there in, in terms of reflections and I think so true about teaching staff and school staff that you know perhaps doesn't there's not really been the coverage in the media as such about how many challenges they've faced and, and what it's been like for them and I think great to have the shout out there and Sabrina I think couldn't agree more with what you've said, particularly from a social mobility point of view. We, we've seen what some of the issues around lost time, um, you know, examinations, how they're going to be run in England, how that might have an impact on, on students from certain backgrounds. So, and, and Rachel, as you mentioned as well, you know, the, the kind of the use of digital and the fact that we're not just going to chuck it away, but we've got now a resource that can benefit all delivery, even when we go back physically. All of these points so valuable, uh, you know, for anybody listening who's perhaps not familiar, as Sabrina mentioned, with widening participation, uh, but wants to find out more. So thank you all for sharing those. Uh, if you have been listening to the podcast and you've thought, OK, wow, I've, I've never heard about any of this. I, I want to find out a bit more. We'll be putting links to um, all of the kind of the websites, uh, the research, the events such as HEPFest, all of that into our episode notes for the podcast so that you can have a read through those um, after you finish listening. 
But that brings us really nicely to the end of the podcast and the end of the season, the end of the next normal, uh, season two. And as this will kind of go out sort of around kind of Christmas, New Year, we've, we've already done Merry Christmases on the last podcast. So I think perhaps better to do some Happy New Year's to sign off with for the final podcast of the series. Um, so a very Happy New Year to you, Sabrina. Thank you for having us and Happy New Year to everyone listening. A very Happy New Year to Caroline. Happy New Year, Chris. Wishing you and Helen and all listeners a fantastic 2021. Wonderful. Uh, Happy New Year to Rachel. Yeah, Happy New Year to um, everybody who's listening. Thanks ever so much for um, inviting us on today. Obviously, hoping for a much better 2021. And I think if we can all keep that positive attitude that we've... uh, we've got used to sort of having into 2021 it'd be absolutely brilliant absolutely fingers crossed uh, happy new year to mike thanks chris thanks helen happy new year to you both and to uh, everybody at uh, hepsi and for the wider partnership it's been an incredible year it's a chance just to relax a bit now this is when you can sit back and listen to hepsi happenings or uh, podcasts over christmas so thank you for this invite and best wishes to everybody for uh, a great 2021. Brilliant. Thank you, Mike. And yes, great plug at the end there. We will be putting these in the episode notes, but uh, if you do get the chance, check out the Hepsi Happenings podcast as well. Uh, very, very happy to promote that. Some, some great content on there, which we'll talk about in the episode notes. And finally, a happy new year to my co-host, Helen. Happy new year to you as well, Chris. Love doing season two. It's been brilliant. It's been uh, it's been interesting to say the least uh, at the times. It's been it's been good. It's been educational. It's been fun. And uh, and here's to 2021 and season three. Absolutely. And uh, I'm almost out of breath. So the only thing left to say is Happy New Year to all of the listeners at home. Uh, have a great New Year and a great start to 2021. And thanks so much for listening. If you're interested in anything that's been discussed on the podcast or would like to be involved as a guest or have a topic to share, please get in touch with Helen or I via LinkedIn. Full details can be found in the episode notes on the Simplecast site.